Hi, everyone. This is just a quick meeting to discuss average atomic mass. If you miss class today, this video is going to be a great way to catch up really fast. Okay, so before we begin today, what I wanted to do was show you just a quick review of what we talked about last week. So we saw this exact statement. An isotope is one of two or more forms of the same element that contain equal numbers of protons but different numbers of neutrons in their nuclei. So last week we learned that if we add up the protons and the neutrons, we will get a mass number. So for this one, we would have a mass equal to one AMU because we have just one proton. For this one, we would get a mass that's equal to two AMU because we have one proton and we have one neutron. Our third isotope would have a mass that was equal to three AMU because I have one proton and two neutrons. Now, we learned how to do average way back in elementary school. And when we did average, what we would do is we would say, okay, we have one AMU for this one, we have two AMU for this one. We have three AMU for the last one. So three plus two is five plus one is six. So we have six AMU all together. Divide it up because I have three of them. So we would get an answer of two AMU. That is a traditional or regular average. What we're going to learn today is actually called a weighted average, and it's different. So a weighted average takes into account which one is the most popular. So we will come to find out that this isotope is a lot more common than either of these. Therefore, when we look up on a periodic table what the average atomic mass is for hydrogen, you're going to see that the average atomic mass for hydrogen equals 1.01 AMU. It does not equal 2 AMU. So this is not a correct answer. So what we have to do is figure out how do we do, how do we calculate a weighted average? So if you look at the definition here, average atomic mass is a weighted average of all naturally occurring isotopes of an atom. Some isotopes are more common than others, meaning out of all of the isotopes that exist, you might have 50% of one type and 10% of another and 20% of another, but your average is gonna be closest to whichever one has the largest percentage. So continuing, some isotopes are more common than others and this is reflected in their relative abundance or in their percentage. So the ones that have the largest percentage will have the greatest influence on what that mass is. We actually use weighted average in this class. When I calculate your grade, it's not a straight average. Not every homework assignment is worth as much as a test or a quiz or even a lab. So, what ends up happening is I use different percentages. So tests and quizzes, they're worth 40%. Classwork and homework is worth 30%. And lab activities and simulations, and we're going to do a simulation on average atomic mass, lab activities and simulations are also worth 30%. So if I were calculating this, I would take the number of points that I have, multiply it by its percent, and get an answer. Once I get an answer for each category, I add them up, and that's how I come up with your total grade. So for this student, the total grade would be about 81%. What we're going to do on the next page is something very similar. We're going to find a weighted average, but instead of talking about grades, we're going to be talking about different isotopes for an element. Okay, let's take a look at our first problem. It says copper has two naturally occurring isotopes. One has a mass of 63 AMU, and the other has a mass of 
65 AMU and a relative abundance of 30.83%. What does that actually mean? So if we take a look at this picture, imagine all, here's earth, imagine all of the copper on earth and we got it into one spot. If we got all of that copper into one spot, then 69% of that copper, 69.17% of that copper would have a mass of 63 and 30.83% of that copper would have a mass of 65. So if you notice, they're isotopes, they both have 29 protons, but they have different numbers of neutrons. So if you look at this one, it has 34 neutrons, and over here, this one has 36 neutrons. So because they have different numbers of neutrons, they're considered isotopes. At this point, what you would do in order to calculate that is what we're gonna try and do in the problem. So we're gonna go back and look at it. This, by the way, is a pie chart that shows exactly the breakdown. So about 70% of it, 69.17% is this one isotope, and then the other 30% is the other isotope, and this would represent all of the copper that exists. So let's take a look at our first example. So as we're going through these, do your best to try and write down uh, the information exactly as I'm showing it to you. So copper has two naturally occurring isotopes. One has a mass of 63 AMU, so I'm going to write that here, and a relative abundance of 69.17%. When you see the percents, you have to divide them by 100 to convert them to a decimal. So that means we're gonna move the decimal place over two spots. So I'm gonna put this in parentheses, 0.6917. There are two isotopes for copper that we're gonna talk about. The second isotope has a mass of 65 AMU. So down here, I'm gonna write 65 AMU. And again, I'm gonna take this number here, I'm gonna convert it to a decimal by moving the decimal point two spots to the left. So I have 0.3083. Now, I'm gonna take each of these values and I'm gonna find out what they're equal to. So 63 times 0.6917, that turns out to be 43.5, and we're gonna keep two decimal places. So 43.58, and our second part, 65 times 0.3083, and that turns out to be 20.04. These are both in AMU. And then finally, we'll add those two pieces together. So 43.58 plus 20.04, and we get 63.62 AMU. This is going to be very close to the number that you see when you look up its mass on a periodic table. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a minute to look over that. The most important part here is to remember that when you have a percent, you have to change that to a decimal by moving the decimal point over two spots. Let's take a look at example two. It says gallium has an isotope with a mass of 68.926 AMU. and a second isotope with a mass of 70.925. So this is not very obvious here. This is 70.925 AMU. And it wants us to calculate the average atomic mass. Now, in this problem, it only gave us one of the percents. So the percent for 68.926, that's this one right here, 
that turned out to be 60%. Or when we write it down here, we're going to write 0 0.6000. If that part is 60%, what is the other part that's missing? Well, together, it adds up to be 100%. So if part of it is 60%, so like this amount, let's go over here, then this part is 40%. So this number down here is going to be four and then three zeros. Now we're gonna calculate that just like we did before. This turns out to be 41.36 AMU. And the next one turns out to be 28.37. And together, we add them up. Together, they equal 69.73 AMU. Okay, at this time, what I would like to do is to open up our homework assignment and take a look at how we are going to uh, cover these three problems. Okay, you can see my screen now. We're gonna take a look at our first problem here. It says rubidium is a soft silvery white metal that has two common isotopes. 85 and 87. So if the abundance of rubidium 85 is, so I'm gonna type in 85 AMU, then remember that I'm gonna convert my percent into a decimal by moving the decimal point over two spots. And I'll do the same thing for my 87 AMU and its percentage also divided by 100. So now I have my two pieces. So I'm going to do 85 times 0.722. That turns out to be 61.37 AMU. And for my second one, I have 87 times 0.278. And that turns out to be 24.19. AMU. And then, as I mentioned, the last part is going to be simply to add these two pieces together. So after I add them together, I wind up getting as my final answer. So 61.37 plus 24.19, 85.56. All right. I hope that explains how to do these problems. Again, a weighted average is slightly different than a regular average where you would just add them up and divide by two or add three things up and divide by three. So it's a little different, but it's not very challenging. Alrighty, I hope everyone has uh, a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon.